welcome the dweller of the dark. We are a channel honoring the yellowed and blackened bones of many prominent authors. We will be digging up several obscure, strange, and forgotten authors who influence many of the great horror, science fiction, and fantasy writers today. Comment if you have an author you'd like to raise from the dead. Crank up the chainsaw and shred the like button to pieces if a tail rips out your beating heart. Hideous Beast, join our legion of ghouls and subscribe for more tales of the horrifying, obscure, strange, and forgotten. Our collection continues to climb out of the tombs. Merchandise and swag coming soon. Unknown horror masters, send us ghoulish delights for the Skull and Bones collection. Your pound of writer's flesh will be fed to our ravenous crypt of fans. Walk our fiery path and find us on here, our websites, podcast, and Fiverr to raise seven kinds of hell. Check out our new books on Amazon, podcast, and websites. YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Anchor FM, Spotify, and many more. Dweller of the Dark. A new Kindle Vela story, Curse of the Sea Witch, has been released. Check out our other links and series, Where the Wolf Dwells, The Curious Death of Dionysus Chenault. Our books and ebooks are on Kindle Amazon and Vela. Follow, support us on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Bandcamp, Dweller of the Dark. Children of Horror, tonight. We travel to Ghostly Grand Isle for a series of three Kindle Vela episodes from our latest horrific tale. For the first time ever, we bring you Curse of the Sea Witch. Enjoy. Curse of the Sea Witch by Jeffrey LeBlanc. First published in Kindle Vela, March 16th, 2022. Episode 1 The Murder And some return by the failing light and some in the waking dream for she hears the heels of the dripping ghost that ride the rough roof beam Kipling These scoundrels were of the sea Rough men, some would say, vagabonds and criminals, others might profess. Brawlers and braggarts abounded on Grand Isle. Crowing boasters and sailors who drank whiskey and rye, as they roared and reared from shore to shore of the seaside town, where many a pirate or devil might dwell. Such were the evil likes of Hawkeye Santney and his crooked minion Blisters Petri. How many times I had as a sun-tanned golden-haired teen stolen to Cisco's Cajun Cantina door to listen to their foul curses. How my ears strained and I giggled with wicked merriment at their profane arguments. Oh how my childhood friends and I mimicked and embellished their wild sea songs. Totally fearful of them and in total jealous admiration of these sailors who had journeyed beyond the jetties and into ocean blue. Islanders of Grand Isle gazed on them with utter fear and admiration, for they were not like the rest of the Grand Isle men. They were not content to ply their trade in the bay or estuaries along the coast. They were not men who held to the jagged teeth of the shoals and the drumming of drifting dunes. No net shacks, no cast nets, and certainly no small bateau for them. Deep heaving oceans were their calling. Seas of crystalline blue called these marauders. Father 
and farther they delve the deeps. Greater their journeys than any other man in the town. For they shipped on the great trading and shrimping fleets that went out on the white tides to brave the restless emerald ocean and make ports on many an exotic island. Fast were the times I recall in the little seacoast town of Grand Isle when Hawkeye Santney came back to our port, sniveling Blister's Petri at his hip, the pair swaggering down the gangway. Salty and thread-worn were their sea clothes, cracked and aged were their ocean boots and broad leather belts that held pistol and flatjack. Taunts and insults were in every condescending greeting to some favored acquaintance an illicit group or forced kiss to some woman that dared venture too near, then up asphalt or gravel road, roaring some vulgar verse of the sea. Vulturous cringers, idiotic idlers, and the half-witted hangers-on would swarm about the two ocean desperados. Oh, how they encouraged, flattered, and smirked with these rogues Maniacal was the laughter from the complicit with each nasty jest. For to the patrons of Cisco's Cajun Cantina and to some of the weaker minded of Grand Isle, Hawkeye and Blisters with their roguish talk and devilish deeds were of cavalier cloth. The tales brought by these men of the Caribbean, of Haiti, and of distant seas made them appear as valiant as knights of Arthurian legend, men of adventure, men of blood and brawn, and most certainly men of salt and sea. Fear was a square hammer they bludgeoned friend or foes with. Grand Isle lived in fear of Hawkeye and blisters. Such was their reign that when a man was beaten or a woman insulted, the villagers cursed and muttered under breath and did nothing. Dark was the day when Matty Battle's daughter was put to their boot. How horrid were their insults to Millie Bado! How disgusting was the shame by Hawkeye Satney! No one of Grand Isle blood grew courage or dared even to put into words what all thought. Maddie Badeau had never married, living alone with her precious child in a rundown camp close to Kamenata Pass. So close did their modest home lay to the sea that in high tide the waves rolled gently to the ocean-worn door. Was Maddie Badeau a witch, as has been claimed. I do not know. The people of Grand Isle on chilled, firelit nights would say so. Maddie had proven herself of such preternatural discourse. As a Grand Isle witch proclaimed, she carried the darkness of an unnerving gaze. On her countenance were the grim gangly and gaunt traits of an ancient sorcerer who had little to say to anyone. They kept to themselves, minded their own matters, and labored meagerly gathering oysters, crabs, and drying fish. Fools are fleeting. Fools are not long for a world filled with wolves. Such was the case of Millie Bado. Foolish was this pretty child. Vain, naive, and idiotic was Millie to the point of absolute gullibility. Easily beguiled, she fell prey to the carnivorous compliments of Hawkeye Santony. Hazy and deftly gray 
was that cold November day when we found the girl. Knife sharp did the icy air bite our hands as we probed the surf. A churned sea chilled with the frigid breeze out of the north when old Maddie came into the town street sobbing that her precious Millie had vanished. We scattered and scoured the waves and dunes of the beach. Further we trekked in our search among the scrub oaks and myrtles to find her. Curiously or not, Hawkeye Santney, Blisters Petri, and their ilk did not join in. Within Cisco's, they played poker, rattled the bones, and drank the time away. Beyond the surf and salt marsh, as they frolicked in merriment, our search party heard the eternal ebb and flow of tide. We heard the heaving, restless leviathan through the day and night as we searched for Maddie Bado's beloved daughter. By the next morning, in the faint flickering of early light of the ghostly dawn, our search was at an end. The sea returned a lost child. The ghastly image drifted in on the surf. Maddie Beto's precious child had come home. With a loving caress, the tides bore Millie Bado gently across the alluvial sands and marsh grass. Great was the sea's grasp that it laid Maddie's girl almost at her own door. Satin white was the skin of Millie Bado. Her arms were outstretched, reaching for comfort from the silvery sea. Ocean foam danced and cloaked her calm face and the ashen tide sighed about her slender limbs. Maddie Beto's eyes were cryptic stone, yet she stood above her dead Millie, silent as the grave. Maddie kept her vigil of silence until Hawkeye Santney and his desperados approached the scene after their night of debauchery. Swooning and swaying, they had reeled down from the cantina Glass mugs still in their hands. Drugged and drunk was Hawkeye, but the people made way to let him pass. All of the town suspicious, yet not a one lifted a hand in vengeance. Murder may have been in their souls, but cowardice was in their hearts. The fairest fade, and the fairest now rot. Ha <laughs> ha! Hawkeye laughed at Maddie Bado as she held the body of her Millie. Thank you for listening. Have a great night.